Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to a brand new video on my channel. I'm back at home after the season is done for me. And I thought it would be nice to do a little recap time now. How I look back on the season. You always see races from the outside, just on social media. So first off, we can start with the off season. I really think I did quite a good job with trying to test a lot. I did a lot of testing with plush rides. Yeah, he helped me a lot with trying different stuff with the fork and even with the shock, trying different tunes for rebound, low speed compression. We did some high speed compression tuning, I believe. So yeah, I did a lot of testing with suspension, stayed on the same bike, same tires, tried some different new tires, but mainly stayed with Magic Mare in the front, Techie Chan, Schwalbe tires represent in the back. I switched to Magic Mary front and rear over the season and then Magic Mary and Dirty Dan kind of set up as well if it was very muddy like in Ludon Vier and Dirty Dan both front and rear but I cut them so they were rolling a bit faster things like that I was always running quite wide and high handlebars and I wanted to be better on the flat bits of the tracks because I felt like I was in the steep bits I was always good on the flat bits I was lacking a little bit and of course the tracks are mostly flat and not that steep so I really lowered my handlebar height um I think at least 15 to 20 millimeters so I'm very low in handlebar and then I actually went from 770 to 7 50 at one point but back to 760 um, where I'm at now which I feel like is the the perfect width 750 was very good for like off-season tracks at home where it's quite tight and slow but then I felt like once we went out to tracks like Alec in Switzerland or Finale where it's quite fast and hitting square edges and stuff I felt like the wider handlebar was a little bit better. So I went back to 760, stayed there, um, but this was definitely uh, quite a big change, especially the height of the handlebar, which changed a lot. With the handlebar, the more weight goes over the front. So then you have to adapt with shock and fork, everything like that. So yeah, I felt like I was very good. I had, of course, my off season with Hattie, uh, my girlfriend over in the UK. So I did a lot of riding in bike park wheels and Duffy. Uh, Forest of Dean and I really felt like that helped me a lot. I trained my ass off this winter with Hattie helping me out on the physical side so she helped me a lot with all the road biking, all the interval sprints, gym, everything she basically was like I'll help you. So I could definitely feel like on the first couple of rounds straight away I was like yeah I am recovering way better. I have no arm pump all of a sudden so this is basically off season wrapped up very shortly. And now let's talk about some of my highlights of this year. Starting off with my best Enduro World Cup result in Comblo, which was 24th position. Very good last stage. And it was a muddy race. It was dirty down the front kind of day. Not so much pedaling between the stages, but during the stages it was still qu quite physical I would say. Yeah, ended up 11 on that stage, which was my best stage result of the year. And yeah, 24th on that race. Super happy with that. I felt like I rode in control all the time. Yeah, I was super stoked. I believe after that we went to Alec for the other Enduro World Cup in Switzerland. This was a super physical race. First stage and the fourth stage were absolutely physical. First one was like high in altitude over two and a half thousand height meters with uphill sprints of like one and a half minutes, something like that. So super physical, not really what I'm good at, but to come at that race and still even crash on the last stage, finish in 26th position, was I think a really good sign for me to know that I have the pace and I have the fitness to do it. It just has to come down, a bit of luck, right mindset and stuff like this, where everything has to click and then I can perform. I've did downhill the last, I don't know how many years, um, but now of course changed completely to Enduro. I still raced Leger and Val de Sol this year. Unfortunately, Val de Sol, I broke my wheel. Leger, I qualified 46th, I believe, which is absolutely crazy. I didn't expect that. Of course, it's 
It is one of my favorite venues to go to. I feel like I always do fairly well at this race. Coming from Enduro and not really did any downhill riding over the winter, it was very good to know that, um, yeah, I was still on pace and kind of peaked in the qualities and then couldn't really back it up for the semis. But all in all, I think I was super stoked with just making it into that. If you look at the guys who currently not even qualify for the semis, top, top riders already so just to mix it in there was a very good sign for me and I was super happy. Now, for example, in Val Soul, I broke my front wheel in the quality. So basically all my chances to even do the finals um, already more than gone. I signed up for the four cross race. Actually didn't even really want to do it after that because I was a bit gutted at that point. But I thought I'll just give it a go. I raced with my Enduro bike, full downhill tires, coil fork and shock. So like the slowest, heaviest bike for pumping really. Still somehow made it work, came into the finals. Unfortunately, uh, Luca, another rider, tucked his front in the second corner. He fell into me. Um, still continued. Um, I got a third still, so that was very cool to be on the podium. Maybe if I have a little bit of a better bike, faster rolling speed, I wanna do it again next year if the time and schedule and everything fits in. Um, but it was definitely a cool experience, a lot of crowd as well, so just um, all in all very good time. Of course, there's a lot of goods and a lot of highs, but there's also some lows and negatives in a full season. Um, you can't really get away from those things, unfortunately. I mean, everyone always has negative things in their life and ups and downs. Yeah, you can sit back and just uh, accept it or go on, but it's sometimes good to reflect on it and take some positives out of it and learn from those things. One of the lowest points in my year, I think, was Ludanvier this year. It was only a couple weeks ago from this video has been shot. Did all the prep I could do, trained super hard during the summer break, really like focused that uh, I was super strong going into these last couple of races. Basically started the first stage in the race, pedaled out of the gate, started to accelerate and my chain snapped straight away. Um, and it was a super pedally slow uphill downhill kind of trail so without a chain you it's like super difficult to make up the time but on the ridge line for example i realized i had no chain a spare chain with me and then was thinking how i'm gonna even get to the second stage and finish the race so then i turned around pushed back up some riders passed me and then one of the riders had my chain in their backpack. So then I turned around again, continued on the stage and then just tried to like reset my mind. But it was so difficult because I already lost so much time. And then I tried to push and like step with my feet to just get forward. But I got passed by so many riders and then to reset. It was super difficult. It was like the muddiest track I've ever raced for enduro. It was like so slow and so soft. And it was, yeah, it was very hard to then like, okay, we're we just going to full send it now. Cause if I, if you do that, you just crash into the trees and it will make your life even more difficult. This was definitely one of the lowest parts of my season. And then, for example, Champry, the European downhill champs, I did that race as well. I made a vlog about it, I think, from Trekwalk, but never ended up posting anything from it. Mainly the reason because of that is, uh, it just, I don't know, I was just not fast enough. And it's sometimes hard to um, accept those things and deal with those things. If you know why you're slow, it's kind of nice in a way. But if you don't know why you're so far behind, it's kind of upsetting. And so at the end, I finished 29th in the Enduro World Cup overall, which is not really my goal. But looking back on how much progress I made from last year, I think I should be very happy with how everything has gone and the steps forward I've made in my enduro career. That last race didn't help at all with the overall. I was kind of hoping to get into a top 20 overall, but of course I knew in Lunanvier I was gonna do at least my best result ever. So I trained very hard, had the goal in mind, just didn't work out and actually went the opposite direction of just snapping the chain and everything was really over at that point, which was kind of sad. And then, yeah, I raced 
Enduro World Championships last week, which is only a one-off race, but still the biggest race of the season. So it's worth mentioning that. Yeah, I got 39th in that race. It was definitely a big emotional roller coaster for me, that race. Really, I don't know, the first stage I fell um, and my shoulder was still hurting at that time a little bit from the crash the day before. And then on the second stage, I was like, okay, I just reset, go again, fell again. And then at that point, um, yeah, I was a bit in a difficult position because um, the next day I was gonna go to a funeral. Um, so I was thinking about that a little bit and I was like, oh, I, I can also just quit the race now and go to the funeral. I came past one of my good friends, Manu, gave me some good spirits to continue the race and just have fun. And um, yeah, really pushed hard on that third stage and actually like enjoyed riding a lot. Big step forward from the, the stages prior and then continued and then still got 22nd in the last stage. Um, but it was like one of those things where you just don't give up, keep going and good things will come. And I think this is also one of the things I want to share with you guys if, is that if you keep on going and just have fun doing it, good things will come one way or the other. And sometimes bad things happen and then you, you find new good things to replace it or you realize actually those things are way more fun to do. For example, with me, with having a pretty shitty downhill season two years ago and then wanting me to switch over to enduro which actually is for me i think one of the best things i've done i really love riding enduro and racing it too i have a big off season coming now um i'm just gonna chill for these next couple of weeks just reset mentally do a bit of work on the side and then yeah what's next is um i think uh, i've a lot to prove still for myself and if I continue training and racing like I did this off season and this season and just keep on having fun I think good things will come as I said earlier so yeah that's um that's the video for now that's a roundup of uh, my 2024 enduro and downhill season that's about it really thank you for watching and don't forget to put a thumbs up and see you in the next video